The open forests of North America are home to a wide assortment of herbivores. Some families have been thriving for millions of years, such as the sauropods and the ankylosaurs, each filling their own niche and having different ways to survive. However, here in what will one day be the Western United States, a new family is making their debut, ironically coming from a group of carnivores. Moving through the low-lying vegetation in great numbers is a flock of Falcarius. These long and thin dinosaurs can grow up to 5 meters long and spend most of their time grazing on low-lying plants. Their leaf-shaped teeth are not as well adapted to herbivory as some other plant-eating dinosaurs, and that is because evolutionarily, they have only recently begun to eat their greens. Falcarius are not too distantly related to dromaeosaurs and oviraptors, but at some point their ancestors traded other animals for plants, and have steadily evolved their long necks, thin skulls, and long digestive systems. If they look familiar, that is because Falcarius and its relatives are some of the earliest known members of the Therizinosaurs, that will one day evolve into the massive, huge clawed giants of the late Cretaceous. For now, they fill the medium-sized, fast-moving herbivore niche, as they retain the strong legs of their ancestors. Most of their day is spent sleeping or eating, and in the forest groups of over 40 are common. They move silently amongst the trees, only occasionally whistling to each other. These whistles have different meanings, depending on how long they go for or how loud they are. Usually, they are signals to regroup, move on, rest, or as an alert for when predators are spotted. They form mixed groups of all ages, from half a meter juveniles to five meter adults, who can reach plants almost two meters off the ground when they stretch themselves out fully. Despite their preference for plants, Falcarius are still omnivores and will occasionally eat small animals and even carrion. One young male has spotted a lizard in some shrubs, and plows his head downwards, causing loud rustling, and many of the other Falcarius turn their heads to look in his direction. As the male lifts his head out of the shrubs with the lizard in his jaws, he is met with a whole lot of staring faces, but they all soon return to their own foraging, as the young male swallows his catch. Falcarius don't like loud noises being made, as they give away their positions to predators, what they don't realize is that one has already found them, and is watching the group from behind a tree. Strider is stalking, steadily moving towards the Valcarius flock, trying to make as little noise as possible. Normally he would either have members of the Blades pack with him, or at the very least his brothers, but today he is hunting alone, and he has good reason to. His older cousin, Thrasher, was ill. Normally, he was just as strong, swift, and energetic as the brothers, but when he would come down with any form of sickness, he was hit the hardest. It had always been this way, but no one knew why. When they were young, their family would take care of them when they were sick, but now that they were part of a different clan, things had changed. They weren't fully integrated into the Blades Pack, and so the other members didn't help Thrasher when he became sick. But they also didn't stop Strider and his brothers from helping him. That was why Strider was alone. Roughguts, Blackback, and himself had split up to cover more ground, but it did mean Strider had to bring down any prey he found alone. The Falcarius would be relatively easy prey, as they are much lighter than he is. Having waited long enough, Strider begins the hunt. He runs out from behind the tree and sprints towards the nearest Falcarius. It isn't long before the sentries see him, and they whistle out an alert. Before long, the flock begin to run away from him, but Strider has already built up plenty of speed, and though the Falcarius do have better stamina than him, in a sprint, he was faster. He closes in on his selected target and prepares to tackle it to the ground, but as he builds up his lunge, the herbivore turns on its heels and faces him, spreading out its arms. Strider jumps forward, flying through the air and grabbing the Falcarius with his claws around its neck. But the Falcarius wraps its own arms around Strider's chest, and as he goes through the air, 
each twist and turn. They both topple over each other in a twist and embrace, tumbling end over end across the ground as the rest of the flock disappear into the forest. Strider ends up on his back, and so he kicks the Therizinosaur off and pulls himself upright. The Falcarius gets up first and faces him. Strider moves forward, going to bite its neck, but the Falcarius' right hand swings and slashes across his face. Strider recoils as the three fresh wounds on his face begin weeping blood. Some get in his eyes, and Strider growls angrily. He raises both hands up, covering his face with his fingers and feathers, but leaving enough space so he can see his target. The Valkyria swings again and cuts into his hand, but Strider kicks the herbivore in the center of its chest, causing it to fly backwards and collapse to the ground. The blow broke multiple bones in his prey's chest, and as it struggles to get up, Strider pounced upwards and brought his foot down on the Valkyria's head. The fragile skull met the ground and burst like a ripe fruit, ending the hunt. Strider looked down at the mess of bone and brain at his feet breathing deeply and ignoring the blood in his eye. He had no time to rest. He grabbed the Valkarius by the shoulder in his jaws and began pulling it back to where Thrasher was resting, now wishing he had gone for a lighter target. Over an hour later, Strider finally returned to where his cousin was laying. Thrasher rested by a large rock, tucked in to preserve some body heat. Strider pulled off a chunk of meat from the Falcarius and walked over to Thrasher. He placed the meat down in front of his cousin, and the weary Utah Raptor looked up at him. Strider waited as Thrasher looked down at the meat, but he soon turned away and tried to go back to sleep. He was so weak he couldn't even eat, Strider thought, now even more concerned, but there was nothing more that he could do and so he rested next to Thrasher, putting his arm over him and covering him as best he could with the feathers on his tail, to try and insulate him as best he could. He would stay with him, and hopefully his siblings would be back soon. As the tired Strider began to fall asleep, he could feel just how cold Thrasher had become. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the earliest known Therizinosaur, Falcarius. Falcarius' first remains were discovered in 1999 in the Sedare Mountain Formation of Utah. Two main bone beds would be found over the years, and it is believed that up to 3,000 individuals have been found. This is a lot of material, even though all the individuals were known from limited remains but even different age groups of this species have been discovered in these bone beds. In 2005, it was named Falcarius utahensis, the genus name meaning sickle cutter, and the species name reflecting the state it was discovered in. It lived between 139 and 138 million years ago in the early Cretaceous. In life, it reached lengths between 4 to 5 meters long, stood 1.2 meters high at the hip, but could have probably reached up to 2 meters high with its long neck, and weighed around 100 kilograms. Falcarius is the most basal of the Therizinosauridae family. This is not just due to how old it is, in relation to other members of its family, but because it has both basal and derived physical traits. For a quick rundown on the Therizinosaur family, they are theropods that are mostly herbivorous, with long forelimbs and very large claws, that walk on all four toes as opposed to three like most other theropods. They have long necks, small heads, shorter tails with a more vertical stance, wide hips with a backward face in pelvis to accommodate a large gut. Falcarius is seen as a transitional form between the later Therizinosauridae and their more carnivorous ancestors, being most closely related to the Manoraptora family which include the Dromaeosaurs, Troodontids, and Oviraptors. Starting at the head, we can see it is long and slender, and its jaws were filled with teeth. It had 16 teeth in the maxilla, and 28 in the dentary. The maxilla teeth are small and leaf-shaped, with fine serrations, which would have been used for feeding on plants. 
However, the front teeth of the lower jaw are longer and sharper, better suited for carnivory. Though it's thought that Thalcari is mainly a plant life most of the time, it may have fed on small animals on occasion, at least far more than its descendants. Thalcarius is also noted to have a relatively large brain case. If you want to learn more about Therizinosaur brains, please go watch my Erlikosaurus video, link in the description. The head was held on a long neck composed of many elongated cervical vertebra that gave the animal a fair amount of flexibility and allowed it to reach food up to 2 meters off the ground. The arms of Valcarius are not particularly long for a theropod, but were quite robust, with the epicondyles being very thick, which means it was holding large muscles, as well as the shaft of the humerus being reinforced by thickenings extending towards the condyles of the lower joint. Plus, the tendon that attached to the thumb has a raised attachment point with deep grooves for ligaments. The hand is large for a theropod, but not robustly built with long metacarpals and three long fingers, the first being the longest and the third being the shortest. The fingers end with long, slightly curved claws, the largest reaching 13 centimeters long, that were most likely used for defense. Unlike in later Therizinosaurs, Falcarius' pubic bone pointed forward, though it still likely had a wide gut. Another difference is that its legs were built for running, as they were quite long, gracile, and the lower leg was longer than the thigh bone, a feature commonly seen in fleet-footed animals. It also only stood on three toes, with the first toe still being a dew claw that didn't touch the ground. Using all four toes would evolve later, when the family needed to better support their weight. As multiple species of Therizinosaur and Manoraptorans have been found with feathers, it's assumed that Falcarius also had them, likely being downy feathers. Now it's been suggested that Therizinosaurs evolved their signature long hand claws to grasp and manipulate branches to pull them closer to their mouths to feed. Looking at Falcarius, it's pretty obvious it didn't use its claws for this purpose, as its neck is far too long for its hands to be of any assistance. These claws could have been used defensively, but it's highly likely they became bigger and bigger as time went on, simply because of sexual selection. Having large claws that males display to females to show just how big and strong they are, is the simplest answer to why they became as over the top as they were in species like Therizinosaurus itself. If you find that hard to believe, just look at some modern examples. The various antlers and horns of antelopes and deer, the crazy display feathers of different birds, the huge size difference in crocodiles. There are plenty of examples in the fossil record as well. Growing bee claws certainly isn't the craziest thing to happen. Falcarius is a rare example of a transitional species that so clearly has the physical features of its ancestors and has clear adaptations that fit with its descendants. It, along with a slightly younger Bipiosaurus from China, are the oldest confirmed members of the Therizinosauria group, and are invaluable in piecing together the family's history and distribution. In fact, it was thought that this family originated in Asia, as only one other Therizinosaur has been found in North America, with two species found on opposite sides of the world living around the same time, it's clear now that they were widespread even during the early Cretaceous. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any studies done on Falcarius' growth rates or possible sexual dimorphism, which is a shame as there are literally thousands of fossils with all different age groups, from 0.5 meter individuals to full adults. For any aspiring researchers out there, maybe that would be a cool branch of study. There's certainly enough material. Falcarius is also rare in that the transition between a group going from carnivores to herbivores doesn't happen very often, and with Falcarius, we can see what changes were happening to its body in order to make that transition. But what do you think of Falcarius? And for my question of the week, do you think Falcarius more likely ran away from frats, as that's what it's built for, or do you think it stood its ground more than other dinosaurs that were built for speed? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and please enjoy the rest of the narrative section.
Strider slowly woke up. He lifted his head and looked around, checking for danger. He then pulled his arm and tail off of Thrasher and stood up, stretching his limbs. Tentatively, he nudged Thrasher to wake him up, but Thrasher didn't respond. Strider nudged him again, and one of Thrasher's arms meekly fell to the floor. Strider pulled back, looked over his cousin, and knew he was dead. He had lost his fight with the illness. Strider stood there for a long time. Thrasher had been a leader to the brothers since even before they left the Red Claw Pack. He was strong, reliable, and had adopted One-Eye's patience. He may have been a cousin, but their bond was as strong as any of the brothers, and now he was gone. Eventually, he heard one of the blades coming up to him. Looking up, he saw the alpha male, Claymore, had arrived, and he had brought some juveniles who were already running to feed on the Falcarius that Strider had killed and hauled all this way, for nothing. Claymore examined Strider, and then looked over Thrasher's body, acknowledging the loss of a thus far valuable member of his clan. But he did not leave Strider long to grieve. He had to hear what the Alpha had to say. Do you know why you haven't been formally accepted into our clan yet? Claymore asked. I have not yet been here long enough to be accepted, Strider answered somberly. It is because you don't see yourself as one of us. You spend so much of your time remembering what pack you came from, instead of dedicating yourself to the one you are now a part of. When you believe yourself to be a blade, you will become a blade. Do you understand? Claymore pronounced. Uh, yes, I will do so. Strider fumbled his response. Claymore looked over the younger Utah Raptor, knowing he had much to learn. Sometimes you had to give new members a push, especially during difficult times. Come, we must inform the clan of our latest loss, Claymore stated before turning to gather up the juveniles. Strider looked over Thrasher's body one last time, and turned around and followed his alpha. Another connection to his past, torn away from him.